St. Matthew's family. I'm here to lift up a few of our announcements. Christian sympathy is extended to Louis Bergman and family in the death of his aunt, Maggie Carter, who died at the age of 104 in Valdosta, Georgia. Please keep the family in prayer. I have two thank you notes. Thank you, my church family, for the many kind and thoughtful expressions of, upon the loss of my brother, Walter Smith, in New York City. Comfort and strength were found in them. They will help me and my family find peace. Rosalind Smith. We thank you for your kind expressions of sympathy during the passing of our nephew, Stephen Pettis of Washington, D.C. The memorial service was held Monday, May 11. Continue to keep us in your prayers, Charles and Jean Brown and family. The Father's Day service on June 21st will not have the typical United Methodist Men special worship service and recognition book. Are you still working on that gauntlet squat challenge? You only have a few more days to May 19th. If you were able to complete it, please send an email or call the church. The sanitation process is about to start, and due to the deep cleaning necessary in the church, Access to the buildings will be limited to office staff and food pantry volunteers only. We are asking if your key fob has been deactivated that you do not come into the church. 
even if you do see that someone is there. Endowed Scholarship Committee is inviting our high school graduates to apply for a St. Matthew Scholarship. The recipient criteria consists of being a member and an active participant in church activities at the church and have been accepted to accredited community college or four-year institution. High school graduates should contact Mrs. Carolyn Bergman at 336-540-8602 to receive an application and more information. That application with your acceptance letter is due to her by June 12th. In keeping with our church practices, we will honor our 2020 high school, college, and postgraduate degree recipients on a date to be announced soon. Please submit to Higher Education Ministry your name, your school, the degree, and future plans. And you may also submit a picture if you'd like. This goes to Carolyn Clark at carolmpc123 at bellsouth.net. That's C-A-R-O-L-M-P-C-123 at bellsouth.net. Thanks to the generosity of two anonymous church members, we were able to purchase a new Zoom account and have set up reoccurring meetings for our church services and our Bible studies. The Zoom account that we have from Western North Carolina Conference expired on the 16th. And thanks to their generosity, we are now able to continue to have our virtual services and our Bible studies and even meetings when needed. So the old meeting IDs that you have stored or you have on your bulletins from last week and beyond are no longer valid. Please check your bulletin from this week to get the new account numbers, meeting IDs. You can still give your tithes and offerings through three ways. Give Plus app is an online way of giving. Mail it in or you can drop by the church. Use the slot, mail slot at the Britton Street door entrance in a sealed envelope, please leave your tithes and offerings. There is extra envelopes on the outside of that door with a pen if needed so that you can take them home with you and bring them back or you can fill it out while you're there. Thank you so much for your attention and have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Good morning. Today's story is called A Different Way of Saying. We see light and color and shapes with our miraculous eyes. Our eyes allow us to see the faces of our friends and family, our pets, trees, flowers, lakes, streams, and mountains. They will allow us to read wonderful books and we use our eyes to make things such as sewing, art, and woodworking projects. We could go on and on about all the things our eyes enable us to see and do. There's also a different way of seeing that has to do with what you feel, what we feel and understand. Do you ever find yourself saying, oh, I see, now I understand? You may experience this when you see and believe that someone loves you, or when you realize that the world is a beautiful place, God's creation. Or you may use this different way of seeing to realize you have choices about what you do and that certain things make you happy. This is a different way of seeing and knowing. There is a Bible story about a blind man who was sitting by the roadside hoping that the many people who were passing by would help him by giving him money. Although he couldn't see with his eyes, he somehow knew that Jesus was coming and he began to shout saying, Jesus, you son of David, have mercy on me. People around the blind man tried to quiet him, but he called out more loudly, you son of David, Jesus, have mercy on me. The blind man could not see with his eyes, but he used this different way of seeing and he understood that Jesus had the power of God to be able to heal him. Jesus stopped and said to the man, what do you want me to do for you? The man told Jesus that he wanted to be cured of his blindness and see again. Jesus said to the man, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately the man could see. This man received the miracle of healing and was able to see with his eyes because he understood and believed in the power of God. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for today and every day. Use your eyes to see all you can see of this beautiful world and also use this different way of seeing to understand that God loves you and believe. Amen. Good morning. 
The scripture lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. I will be reading from the King James Version. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be indeed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I greet you in the strong name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this third Sunday in May. It's good to see you this morning and be with you. 
I know we've been doing these streaming services and they've been going pretty well. We're probably going to do these at least until the end of May. The Bishop and Cabinet put out a recent um, phase, three-phase plan to open up churches, and they recommend that we don't go back to church at least until after May 31st. So the trustees are trying to work on a plan with them in conjunction with the council and different committees uh, to make sure when the best time would be for us to go back into the church building. Now, we realize that not everybody's going to come back at the same time, and that's probably wise. But we're going to try to find a way to do physical distancing within the sanctuary, uh, utilizing <coughs> uh, the the sanctuary, uh, room 20, the fellowship hall in the chapel, so we can broadcast a service to all of those places. In one way or another, we're probably going to be a streaming church from this point forward. Not just for those of you who want to be at home until maybe a vaccine has come forth, but also as a way of outreach to bring more people into God's house. So this is actually a very good time for us, a very wonderful time for us to become something brand new. Let's begin now with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day that you've made. We thank you for this time to come together in this Zoom meeting worship. We thank you that you're ever inventive, Lord, ever innovative, Lord, and teach us to be flexible so that we can come together and still give you praise, honor, and glory. So we ask now, Lord, you come and have your own way. You are the potter and we are your clay. Amen. Today, we're going to talk about wisdom and understanding. And we're going to talk about these things in the context of Jesus' last day with his disciples. And as we talk about wisdom and understanding, we're going to talk about what it means to be empowered by God and for all things to become new. Now, the setting was this. They were in Bethany. And Jesus was with his disciples and he was talking with them. And what he did was he opened their minds. He opened their minds so they could understand the scripture in a way they had never understood the scripture before. Jesus knew that that was his last day with them. He knew that he was going to ascend into heaven, but he had to prepare them to be ready to take over for him, for them to be ready to spread the word of God, to invite others into the fellowship, and to make sure that the power of sin could be broken in this world. So he opened their minds and he told them, now you shall understand in the way God wants you to understand. And after he opened their minds and, and he said, now come with me to this place that I just want you to be with me for a little while longer. And there he told them, wait here, wait in Bethany until my father gives you that thing which was promised to you, the Holy Spirit. You must be empowered from on high for the task that you have come now, the task that is yet before you. So as Jesus spoke, he blessed them. And as he blessed them, he ascended into heaven. And when he had disappeared and they saw him no more, they rejoiced and they shouted out as they went back to Bethany, saying how good God is. For they were ready now to follow God all the way, even to their own particular crosses. And it's interesting that once God opened their minds and taught them how to read the scripture, the second thing that Jesus Christ said was, wait. Wait to be empowered from God on high. Waiting is a wonderful thing. It's like a pause. It gives you time to consider what's going on in your life. Are things really going the way that you want them to go? Are we willing to wait? And then waiting just doesn't mean standing still. It means learning to listen, learning to look, and learning to speak in ways that says, I'm ready now to receive what God will give to me. I'm ready now to be something brand new. I'm ready to follow. I'm ready to observe. I'm ready to actually know. I was in a meeting today with the uh, pulpit forum. One of the speakers says, and I thought was quite interesting. He says, everybody seems to be in a hurry to get back to what we once had. But maybe we're not asking the right question. Maybe we're looking at it in not quite a creative way. Maybe we need to ask the question, why go back to what we had before? Wasn't what we had, what got us where we are now? Why go back to how things used to be? Maybe God is calling us to a brand new day. And all of a sudden it felt like my mind was opened. 
And I started to see things in a brand new way. I started to understand this particular scripture today in a brand new way. I started to say, what if we become something brand new? What if this virus itself was a good way to pause, to wait, to see what God will bring us, how we can be brand new from this time forward? Maybe it's good for us not to go back to the old St. Matthews, to be become a new St. Matthews, a new people revived. A new people empowered. A new people whose minds have been opened. Jesus has ascended. But the Holy Spirit is here with us. Even now. Even through this time together. When we come back to the church and in-person worship is going to look very different. Communion will be different. Offerings will be different. How we sit in the sanctuary will be different. We're going to wear masks when we first come back to protect one another. It's going to be very different, but that difference can be the blessing of new life, a new hope, a new way to do ministry, a new streaming. We're going to always probably stream one way or another. Now we can touch people, not just here in Greensboro. We can go all the way to California, go around the world to India. We can touch lives that we never touched before simply by having a camera and a computer and the right software and broadcasting ourselves all over the place. We can introduce people to Jesus Christ so that minds can be opened. People can start to read this thing we call the Bible. They can start to understand the words. It's not a secret. It's just it's there playing for all who are willing to see. Those empowered by God. You. Me. And those whom God is calling to God's self right now. So this is a time of pause, a time to catch our breath, a time to consider what we had, but maybe also what God wants to give us, what it means to be brand new through COVID-19, past COVID-19, into a new reality. What we had is gone. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when we see it, God is going to be in it. And maybe we too can rejoice. Go to St. Matthew shouting Hosanna and hallelujah because of what God is doing right now. This new day in a new way for St. Matthew's church. Are you ready, church? Are you ready to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ through new medium, through new ways, through new mouths and new eyes and new ears? Are you ready to be empowered from on high and to see life in a way you've never seen life before and not to regret what is gone, but to rejoice in the abundance that is still being given? God gives us what we need right on time. And here we are together. You know, this is the first time some of you have invited me into your homes. And here I am with you through Zoom on your computer or through your phone. We're having house meetings like the ancient church. We're coming together in our homes to praise God. And our houses are now places of worship in ways that never been places of worship before. They are anointed, blessed by God. Your favorite chair should be a favorite chair all anew. Your meal should become something like a feast every day. Because God is with you. God is at your table. God is with you in your lounging chair. God watches over you in the night. And God speaks with you in your dreams. We have not been abandoned. We are not alone. We are becoming something brand new. What we shall be shall be beautiful in the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.